So, so we're recording. Already? Yes. It's going. It's going. Ready? Yeah. Hi, this is Rofshan Mamet Kuliev, and this is All Strings Considered. Okay? Yeah. Hey everyone, it's summertime in LA. It's a hundred degrees and not even August yet. All Strings Considered is back after a fantastic time in Spain, followed by an intense but fun summer term. And I'm really excited to kick off the summer with Russian and Azerbaijani guitarist and winner of the GFA 2012 competition, Rovshan Mamed Kuliev. All Strings Considered is brought to you in part by Guitar Salon International, the world's largest selection of fine classical and flamenco guitars and accessories. So, while we were in Granada, my good friend Chemi presented me with a beautiful hardcover book on the Granada School of Guitar Makers. It's been written and edited by John Ray, who's been building guitars and living in Granada for a long time now. The book is gorgeous and is apparently available to guitar retailers in the U.S. So I'm sure it'll pop up in your local store. And until then, you can check it out at granadaexpert.com slash John Ray. Also, if you sell sheet music, strings, put on a festival, or maybe do something else that's really cool that I've never even heard of, consider advertising on All Strings Considered. For more information, just shoot me an email at info at scottwolfguitar.com. Okay, so I'm really happy to help you get to know Rovshan Mamekuliv a little better. You might have caught him during his GFA Winners Tour in 2013. He stayed with us for a couple days towards the end of that tour, which gave us a chance for this interview. But Rovshan was also nice enough to add one more concert to his already busy schedule and play for my Whittier College guitar series. His playing was full of energy, his technique was flawless, and his dynamic range was unbelievable. Not to mention, his program was a great mix of refreshing interpretations of standard repertoire and pieces that were completely new to me. Personally, I was blown away, but I kind of expected to be. But what impressed me even more was my students' reaction to his playing. And I'm not talking about music majors, either. Our audiences tend to be from my general music courses, you know, classes like music appreciation and American popular music. The fact that his playing was able to have a profound effect on me, a music snob, well, that's comparatively easy to do since we already know he's a GFA winner. My students, though, have no idea what GFA is, nor do they care. They're attending the concert for the sole reason that they get credit for attending the concert. So you can understand my surprise when, at the end of the concert, my students gave an immediate standing ovation. That is a truly rare find. Being that we actually do care how he won GFA, let's start there, and specifically, let's start with the fact that he used Capriccio Arabe in his final round. It's it was uh, I played it in a final so it was I don't know Which is why gutsy but it was yeah many people many people asked me why I choose such a easy piece for GFA final but for me it was I cannot say that it's easy piece yeah so and first of all not technically but dramatically is you have to to mm-hmm. make this composition you know it's, come alive yes so and that's why I choose this piece and it's also kind of piece which I also, I played it in Targa competition. It was my... I just like this piece. Yeah, it's special to And you. I think you have to play what you really like. Because, you know, something has happened between you and this piece. Not yes. between you and, you know, jury. Yes. Or just this situation. But you kind of have good relationship with this piece. It's, it's important. Also, of course, it was not, you know... I uh, studied this piece for many years. And I kind of feel comfortable with this piece i know that i even can see this piece you know it's it's not only music i even some i have exact image about this so and that's why you know i choose this piece for this final do you also feel like when you know a piece that well you're able to sort of take more risks or maybe be more playful in the moment of the performance do you feel like you change your interpretation every time you play it because you know it so well yeah, of course, I cannot play, you know, the same every time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you change a little bit tempo, change a little bit timbers. So it depends on my mood and of 
acoustic of concert hall. Uh huh. Well, talk about that for a moment. How do you react to different acoustic environments? For instance, if you're going to play in a big hall with a lot of reflection. Yes, it's different. So sometimes when when I had this sound check, mm-hmm. I'm trying to listen how sound is going. It's kind of difficult to practice without relationship of acoustic. It make difference for kind of agogical things, I think, and for articulation also. Mm. Because when it's too much reverberation, you have to play more articulated, you know, more like pronounced measure. Ah. When it is, you know, more dry, you can be more, you know, more legato because it's still not not exact legato uh-huh. because it's too dry. So even when I prepared to this GFA competition, I tried to uh, practice in a in a hall. I think every two days I went to my, really? to my conservatory to practice in a big hall because I think it's 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 important because when you practice in a small room, even with you know nice reverberation or something, yeah, uh, it's another feeling. So you you kind of you just hear what is going back to you very fast. But right. in big hall, you have this kind of you know contact with. Or lack of contact, right? Yeah. Like this feeling like the sound just flies away from you. Yes. Suddenly you feel like you got swallowed up by the room. And it can be a little bit intimidating sometimes, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I think that's an important part also. Because sometimes you just think that you are great in your room. Then mm-hmm. you ca- came, to, came to the stage and something is happening. And not because of, of uh, you know nervous situation. But just because of you hadn't got good experience to play in a big hall because i remember that at gfa final it was in my year was in charleston south carolina it was i cannot say that it was you know best acoustic for guitar so it was kind of difficult acoustic Mm. what other things did you do to prepare for gfa (laughs) you know it's easy for me to say because i won this competition (laughs) (laughs) well that makes you the expert doesn't that's why we have this interview (laughs) Uh, but uh I can say just my experience. So I mm-hmm. I tried to, I thought a lot about program. So, mm. you know, what I want to play and what will make me, what will show me from different points of view, you know, different music. So to me, to play more contrast, because I know that's good for competition. Yeah. You know, if you play just, for example, romantic music or just modern music, maybe for jury, it's like, you know, maybe you just can't play this music, but they need to choose, you know, performer yeah. for concert tour. So it must be uh, yeah, interesting. You want to tell us what your program was again? In the final, I played uh, Capriccio Arabe. I played Just How Funky Are You by Andrew York. Was that the set piece? Yes. Okay. It was the set piece. And I played Brower Sonata. I think that's it. Hmm. At the second round, I played Ole Variations and by Leo Bet. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was a obligatory piece, Asensio, two moments from Collectici Intime. So how did you, I mean, you said you thought about your program a lot. Yeah, I thought about this, you know, just choose exactly what, I, what I'm what i sure. So I think all, all program was kind of, I was kind of sure with each piece. So yeah. I told you about image in Capriccio Arabe. So I think in each piece, I, I was kind of sure. And all, all these pieces I played at least for last four years. Uh, it's a, probably a danger of getting tired of the pieces after that long. It depends on piece. Yeah. If you really like this piece, you, you kind of redo every month or every year this piece. Uh-huh. When I knew about, you know, this obligatory piece, Asensio, I was more walking with this, you know, in during March and April. Oh, and I was kind of ready before, you know, they sent this set piece by Andrew York. Uh-huh. So when I received this Andrew York, I just worked more with Andrew York. So I, I feel comfortable about preparation you know, with time because I know that many competitors just haven't got enough time, for example, because they send this set piece and sometimes it's really a challenging piece, but you need to prepare other programs. So you just don't got enough time. Mm-hmm. 
before different competitions it was different before GFA I think I didn't work so much with technique I worked mm. more with music and with I remember that I worked with different musicians I just played them program now we have nice conservatory in my city in Nizhny Novgorod and we have a lot of nice musicians so I played for accordion player I played for piano player we also work together because mm. for my teacher Alexei Petropavlovsky I played this program many times so I, w- I wasn't student at that time when I prepared for JFA so I, I prepared more with myself but uh, I you still got program. other pairs of ears on yes yes I think I, I everybody needed this kind of mirror because you, yeah. you, you, you need to know what is happening really from another side. Even, yeah. you know, just when you play for somebody who, who you really trust, yeah. even if he will not say anything, you can receive a lot of information just for playing. Okay. To see what happens to your own playing. Yes, yes. And I did it, you know, many times before GFA. Um, did you find that an accordion player or a piano player had some kind of interesting... Of takes on some of your music? Of course. Right? Like, what does a pianist say about a cup of about? Well, go oh, ahead, you, know, you were ju- going to say. Just, uh, just some details, you know, because mm. I think different musicians have different ears. So, yeah. for example, if you are a piano player, you feel uh, factura or dynamic, you know, factura. No. For example, bass, uh, accompaniment and melody, it's okay. factura. Oh, okay. Maybe the different layers of voices or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, piano players, I think they feel different layers better. Uh huh. So, so they're bass, much more aware of the separation between the yeah, bass separation. and the accompaniment and the melody. Yeah. So, for example, I think that's kind of uh, even we have the same on guitar. We mm-hmm. have, we can play all yeah. layers together, but our ears, I think, not so. Sometimes not it's so precise. precise. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, and they they just you know can kind of hear this. For example, in Capricha Arabi, we have all these layers like melody, accompaniment, and bass line. And sometimes you just kind of thinking about just melody, but lose a lot of in. Yeah, well, there's that bass. ostinato in the bass that's so beautiful. Yes, I also play for a violin player, and they maybe have more better ears for articulation or phrasing you know where you just break phrase because i i know that also guitarists sometimes just don't listen very well phrasing yeah. maybe guitarist is more stronger with colors i cannot say that with rhythm maybe with rhythm is better accordion players <laughs> uh, really <laughs> yes yes so they feel something like rhythmical structure so of course it depends on on performance so not yeah. all piano players the same but yeah. i mean in general they have something to say. It's just interesting to to share your ideas with mm. other instruments. So I think I, I never will forget this, you know, because it was not only my victory. It was victory of many people who helped me. Of course, my family, because they kind of, you know, support me. It was a difficult time for me because I just become a father so <laughs> i just get married so and i finished my education so everything was in one year wow i had a carnegie hall concert before this gfa so it was also the same year it was 2012 was big year for amazing me. year yeah so how old was your baby when uh, when you were competing did you bring your wife with you at that time? Six months. Six months old? No, so I didn't. I didn't. And you practiced in the nighttime, in <laughs> yeah, between I, feedings. Yeah, I like to practice uh, at the night time. So from, <laughs> I don't know, 9, 10 p.m. till midnight or later. <laughs> it's nice time. I think for me, it's nice time to work with musical uh, ideas. Mm. I don't know, because you may be just a little bit more relaxed. Usually I work more with technical things during the day and then with musical things in the evening. <laughs> so, huh. But it's just me. Yeah, and that's your, you know when your creative side is active and when your technical side is active. That's cool. Yeah, and I like to practice when I'm alone. You know? Yeah. Nobody bothers me. 
Yeah, it's really hard. Even when you know somebody's right in the next room, it's hard to practice. Yeah, yeah. But if when they sleep, so you kind of feel that you are alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ready for a recap? Okay, program stuff first. You have to like the music you're playing. Even if others might say that it's too easy or too well known, like Capriccio Arabe perhaps, Rolfshine clearly had something to say with that piece, and most likely that piece that you're thinking of works just as well. Second, you should be able to live with the majority of your program for a fairly long time. You need to feel totally comfortable with all the pieces. And you should probably ensure that the set of pieces you choose show your versatility. Giving yourself that time will give you more time to learn the obligatory pieces. And those will hopefully be solid by the time you receive the set piece and have to scramble to learn it quickly. Good time management makes a big difference in the end. Then it's also worthwhile to note that Rofshan also knows what time of day is best for his practice and what to practice when. That's just a good general rule. If you're the kind of person who needs a siesta, probably don't want to schedule your practice time in the middle of the afternoon. Then, when you've got your program all together, get used to playing in different acoustic environments. Most of us know to play slightly slower in a live room or a large room, and vice versa. But it's also interesting to note that Rofshan mentions emphasizing articulation as well. And in acoustically dry environments, it's better to really connect those notes, as nothing is going to sound as legato as you want it to. Finally, play for people you respect. If nothing else, you'll get more nervous than usual, and you'll find out where those weak points might be. And play for non-guitarists. They're the ones who are going to focus on the musical ideas, ones that you might not be aware you're overlooking because every guitar player you play for knows how hard that spot is and is just focusing on the technical difficulties. So how about we listen to Roshan's GFA performance of Capriccio Arabe? I especially like how he chooses not to rush anything. That sense of calm beauty pervades almost the entire piece, whereas so many players try to speed up every virtuosic passage to make it more showy. So here's Rofshan, at GFA, and by the way, the video of this can be found really easily on YouTube. Just type in Capriccio Arabe and Rofshan, and Rofshan's name is spelled R-O-V-S-H-A-N. So here's Capriccio Arabe, composed by Francisco Tarrega, and performed by Rovshan live.
So actually it's difficult to say what is my favorite because I've kind of fall, fall in love with each piece what I play. But maybe maybe first track is interesting. So we're all accustomed to having that one be a guitar duo, right? La Vira Breve. Yeah, yeah, it's more famous in guitar duo. Of course it's more famous for, for orchestra. So but uh, I found this arrangement by Kei Kafuji, Japanese guitarist. I also found uh, piano scores and made something like mix of these two variants by myself. I think it's probably not so famous as a solo piece. Yeah. Because it's hard enough as a guitar duet. Yeah, that's true. It's a, it's a, it's a challenging piece, but it's nice music. I think that it's it sounds on guitar very well. And when you are alone, you can be more maybe free sometimes. So you have a lot of Spanish music on there, and you were telling me about yeah, I, your I, first trip. That's right. I'd like to right. hear about that. Yeah, my, my first uh, trip abroad. Actually, my first trip abroad was to Poland. Uh, but I traveled when I was 15, 16 with my father and my teacher to a competition in small town Krynica in, in Poland. And then after that, I just, I just was in, in Russia. And my, you know, my big <laughs> travel after that abroad, and I was alone. So it, that's why I called it my first travel because I was alone, uh -huh. and it was, you know, big competition. It was in Benicassim, Spain, Targa International Guitar Competition, and I think my first experience of guitar was Spanish music. Uh -huh. So also like you, maybe flamenco. Uh -huh. So I knew about guitar more like instrument from Spain. Yeah, I was very excited with this country. Uh -huh. And I was not uh, disappointed. Actually, my guitar also uh, was made in Spain by Manuel Contreras. Right. So it's Manuel Contreras second, so it's Pablo Contreras, mm -hmm. son, son of Contreras. So mm -hmm. they just switched to Manuel Contreras second. Uh -huh. Yes, and maybe that's why I put more Spanish music because I like it. So while we're on a Spanish theme, I'm going to play you Roshan's Naxos recording of Spanish dance number one from Manuel de Falla's short opera titled La Vida Breve.
part of your job, like all of us, is teaching, right? Most performers end up teaching. Yeah, I also I, I teach at the conservatory, Nizhny Novgorod Conservatory in Russia, and I teach in Arzamas Music College, which is something like one hour from where I live. So I like I like teaching very much. So yeah. I have five students at the conservatory. All of them are different, and you can you can receive a lot of information from them from them. You know, <laughs> like, uh, like uh, about technique, like about how to explain something. What you really you didn't think about it. You know, you just do it. Yeah. But you with, with student, else. you you need to explain this and to explain this very correctly and after this explaining you understand better what you really do mm -hmm. so yourself so i think it's good thing also for performer to to teach but with your student you really think about it because sometimes someday it will be exam and all you know we have something like commission uh -huh. and guitar is on faculty of Russian folk instruments in my uh -huh. conservatory. So in this commission, not only guitarists, uh -huh. it's also balalaika players, accordion players, bayan players, and domra players. Uh, I mean, professors. Uh -huh. And they uh, judge your students. So it's... But they're also judging you. Uh, of course, your because yeah. uh, if you are, you know, it depends on teacher, but I feel really, very stressed when my students play so i think for me it's more easy to play myself than to listen to my students <laughs> so do you find that there's something that you're telling your students more than other things is there one thing that comes up all the time <laughs> phrasing yeah and how do you approach it oh, i'm trying to sing uh -huh. i'm trying to let them sing <laughs> and uh, just listen more precise what they do with with phrase how do they develop this phrase dynamic uh, articulation agogical things everything are you one of those teachers who writes all over the score sorry or do you write all over their score here's the phrase you put a big phrase marking you write all sorts of things and ah, change color yeah here. yeah sometimes sometimes <laughs> i think it's an important thing to work with your ears you know how do you listen yourself mm -hmm. because on guitar we cannot make for example uh we cannot make crescendo on one sound, so sound is only decaying. Only like boom, that's it. Yeah. But sometimes in phrase we need this, you know, like it's difficult to make this. You're most likely aware of this, but the melody in most instrumental music is imitating how a voice works. It's just human nature. So good melodies and good phrasing tend to sound or aim to sound like a voice does. This presents a bit of a problem with plucked instruments because you can't make a single note swell like a voice can. For instance, a violin can do it. They can start a note softly and gradually increase the volume of the note. Any wind instrument can do this too. But with a guitar, all you get is the beginning of the note, and no matter what, the sound then begins to decay. This means that a crescendo on a single note is impossible. But we sort of do our best to create the illusion that each note is then growing into the next one. It's more easy to show than to explain. Show us. But <laughs> Let's get a guitar. Give us one thing. Give us one demonstration. Do it this one. Well, get, let's get your guitar. Uh, my guitar. Yeah. We it's only have decay, so how do you fix when you really do want to connect one note to the next one? Uh -huh. And you want that idea of like a singer, because the singer goes, one note, yeah. and then they get to the next so one. I think right? I think the idea is that you listen carefully. Phrase the most important thing is beginning of next note and end of previous note. Ah. So, for example, when note uh, that was I was talking about acoustic uh -huh. with you. Uh, for example, when acoustic is a lot of reverberation, so you can you know make legato more easily. And uh -huh. for example, when it's kind of dry acoustic, so you, you need to listen more carefully to uh -huh. what is happening. Right, because the hall is keeping the sound going, so the legato is going to happen because that sound's actually still going. Right. Even though you're playing the next note. Right, right. So, give me an example of a phrase that. Ha oh, come on, you must be able to remember some so, simple one. So, do you want me to make, you know, like one bet? 
example in one. Oh, word. that would be a Can you do it? <laughs> Can you give a bad example? No, for example. It's hard, isn't it? No, it's not hard. For example, <laughs> if I will play. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's. Be... I don't know what will happen. For example, Adelita, yeah? Oh, because beginning of Adelita, is it? Easy piece. Just, you know, minor oh. part. For so example, I play like. Like just don't don't listen phrase, yeah. Sorry about that little bit of distortion at the beginning, that was my bad. But it still sounds pretty good. He actually could have done a lot worse. It's Rovshan after all, so the tone is beautiful, he's balancing the voices out great, he's also varying the dynamics, but the melody feels a little bit like it's plodding along, and many of the notes lack a sense of direction. Okay, so tell us, first of all, that was kind of flat, right? All yeah, kind of flat. Yeah. So what would you say to your student? You take the first three notes? First five notes? So at, at the lesson, I will try to I will try to get him, you know, just sing the phrase. Mm -hmm. For example, like <laughs> just yum, 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 don't don't yum, include it. Yum, 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 yum. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And for example, even now you sing, you make like so you make something uh -huh. with sound. Uh huh. So like yeah, we cannot yes. make this on guitar. Right. But when we listen, for example. sounds yes, better yes so it's more flexible and i yeah. i'm trying to you know to listen previous not very accurately and the next note you know make like legato so with uh -huh. dynamic and a little bit agogical things in case you're not familiar with the term an agogic accent is when you give a note a slightly longer duration and our minds often interpret that slight rhythmic drag as giving the note more weight or more volume this also works in big crescendos where you might be already at the top of your dynamic range with a series of chords, maybe. But by slightly lengthening each successive chord, your listener believes it's actually getting louder. It actually sounds like it's crescendoing. It's not it's sound. Cool. If, if you will change, maybe if you will check recordings, it, yeah. it will not be sound like this. But you feel this because you're trying. Right. You're trying to make so your intention. Legata. Yeah. It's first of all, it's your long phrasing thinking. Uh huh. You know when you're thinking about next when you play yeah. here, but you're thinking about development of phrase. Mm -hmm. And another thing is, right. yeah. For example, even with this. With this slur, yeah, you can play it like, like uh -huh. this, but you can play like, yeah, where the slur, the slur note actually sounds bigger. Yeah. Yes, because you know, for example, when you sing, you don't sing like da, you sing like da da. Yes, and you make it a little bit crescendo. So uh -huh. you need to make it on guitar also. You know, you have to try to find something. You have to try. Yeah, because when you just play, yeah. you know, just notes. Yes. And even if you play everything perfect, it feels like every, it feels like every it, moment is a beat. Horse yeah. horse music, you know, we call yeah. it like horse music because <laughs> yeah. it's hard to describe, isn't it? Yeah, it's hard to describe. It's hard to describe. Your ears have to be connected to the music, your mind has to be connected yes. to the music. Yes. And if those things aren't happening, you get that flat yes. thing. So even in a two note slur, uh -huh. if you're thinking about it the right way, your hands kind of do it for you. Yes. Right? You need to have uh, experience. Mm. So because uh, my hands do this because I have experience to yes. play this. When you just, you know, just beginner yeah. or you haven't got enough experience with this, it's it will not happen immediately. Right. So you will try, 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 work with this, with phrasing. Also your fantasy is important. So for mm. example, you can sing like, 
I can ask student, please sing, and he will sing like do 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 do. So he will try yeah. make phrasing, yes, but not to do musical things like right. So I think it's your experience of listening music and mm -hmm. other music of your just fantasy, your individuality. I don't know mm -hmm. your expressive mm -hmm. expression. So so when they do sing it and play it in that sort of blocky horse music style. Uh huh. Do, is one of the things you say is go listen to piano, go listen no, go, to violin. Even when you listen, bad interpretation is great because mm. you you kind of know what you don't. What you're need, not. What you don't need to do. It's a good point. Mm. Okay, let's move on to some Azerbaijani music. Rovshan has made a set of six arrangements for guitar from a cycle called Twelve Miniatures by Azerbaijani composer Fikret Amirov. I think that's, you know, that's something special what, what just I play. So yeah. Maybe. Do you want me to tell something about this music? So the first, so it's a ballad. You must know the, these really well, right? So the ballad, what's the next one? Ashuk Sang. Ashuk is a folk, uh, mus yeah. folk musician in Azerbaijan. Okay. So, um, so we have a ballad. We have Ashuk. Ashuk Sang, then lyrical dance. Uh -huh. It's kind of oriental dance in style of, I don't know, like Shekharazite. So this cycle is, yeah, it's sections from 12 miniatures for piano, which were dedicated to Armenian composer Aram Khachaturian. Actually, I just was in Baku, in my in city where I was born, and I picked up some national music, so some classical Azerbaijani music. And I bought this set of CDs, uh, six CDs of classical Azerbaijani music. One CD is like ballet, then opera, then chamber music, then piano music. So, and I found this uh, 12 miniatures on piano CDs. Mm -hmm. And I just heard this and from just from first time, I, I thought that maybe it will be good for guitar uh -huh. so to make an arrangement. And it's, it's, I mean, they are small, colorful and different. I made just uh, arrangement of eight uh, miniatures, but maybe two of them not so not so good on the instrument. Uh, yes, and I just choose these six and change a little bit order, mm -hmm. so make my own cycle of these six miniatures, uh -huh. which I thought that will be you know better on guitar mm. because it's always challenge to play piano music or all other music. On guitar so you kind of have to be sure that it will be better than original <laughs> so those six worked out pretty well mm -hmm. right did you do anything special that added sort of a guitar element to them yeah i i put some you know some pizzicato some harmonics mm. so this piece on hunting i almost change everything <laughs> mm -hmm. so of course when you make arrangements so you need to safe musical ideas but i think in general you, you can be free in, with texture so and the composer is still alive or no he died in 80s hmm. he was soviet composer and uh, he's one of the most famous classical azerbaijani composers hmm. What's his name again fikret amirov he's more famous like a uh, composer for symphonic orchestra his operas is, and ballets is very f famous. Even in Russia, the opera houses make a... Named after him or just... Oh, do no, his productions. No, 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 do, do his opera. The most yeah. famous is one, 1001 Night. Night, I love that, yeah. Yeah, I can I can show you it. Yeah. Nice, nice music. Some good stuff. Also, you know, close to maybe Spanish music. Yeah. Maybe because of Arabic influences mm. for both countries. Mm -hmm. So the, some of the rhythmic, some things rhythmic, are yeah. Even in, in Toccata, you last moment of of the cycle, what I recorded, uh -huh. you can middle part is kind of everybody told me like flamenco part, huh. Sim right. similar chords. Yeah. Oh yeah, amazingly <laughs> sounds, Spanish sounding. Sounds Spanish. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it sounds yeah. also Azerbaijani. And then what's Ivushka? Ivushka, it's uh, variations on a Russian folk theme. It's it's also something special. What's that title? Ivushka, it's a uh, so Iva. You know this tree which looks like willow. Willow tree. Ah. Yeah, willow. And Ivushka, it's like 
Sweet Willow. <laughs> when you put this ending like shka, like diminutive, it it means it make word more soft. Diminutive, yeah. like saying chikiyo instead of chiko. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yes. So Ivushka is like lovely, lovely willow. willow. Ah. Yeah, it's an old Russian folk song, and it's uh, variations on this theme made by Sergei Rudnev. Sergei Rudnev is a famous Russian guitarist and composer and teacher, and he made a lot of arrangements of uh, Russian folk music, mm. so which I also like very much. Anything about this particular piece? Anything we should listen for? During this tour, I, I include in my program another piece by Sergei Rudnev, ah. Old Lime Tree. Which yeah, it's kind of a nature theme going, yeah. Yes, yes. Which <laughs> are <laughs> yeah, because Russian nature is beautiful. So <laughs> many people give me nice feedbacks about Rudnev and yeah. about Azerbaijani pieces, which I was you know surprised and which I really glad to hear from people that they enjoy this music. So, from Roshan's Naxo CD, we are going to hear six miniatures from Azerbaijani composer Fikret Amirov. The titles are Ballad, then Ashug's Song, then Lyrical Dance, On Hunting, Nocturne, and Tokata, which will then be followed by Russian composer Sergei Rudnev's piece titled Ivushka.
We're going to end today's program with a set piece from that year's GFA, Andrew York's How Funky Are You? But before we introduce that piece, let me just say, thanks for listening to All Strings Considered. I'm your host, Scott Wolf. All Strings Considered is brought to you in part by Guitar Salon International, the world's largest selection of fine classical and flamenco guitars and accessories. Hey, don't forget to like the show on Facebook and follow on Twitter at All Strings. And for those of you trying to get your festival or your product to a larger audience, think about advertising on All Strings Considered. For more information, send me an email to info at scottwolfguitar.com. It has been my great pleasure to help you to get to know Rovshan Mamid Kuliv a little bit better. And until next time, enjoy this last piece. Well, I think we should play Just How Funky Are You? Yeah. I it play. Funky, I, I play two times faster now. Now. <laughs> You know groovy. why? Because I I I, di- I wasn't prepared for this. Because for the recording, because it happens incredibly fast after no, the competition, right? No, 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 right? not because of that. Because uh, I I prepared one program and it was with Amirov, Azerbaijani piece. Oh, okay. And Nexus uh, Norbert just told me that maybe we'll have some problems with copyrights. Let's do one more piece. Ah. And I was okay. Which oh, no. I can do maybe just how funky are you? But I didn't play this piece after JFA at all. At all. But you play it now on your program, right? Yeah, now yes, but it's uh, it's matured. half a year after Nexus. Yeah. So and we just decided, okay, let's try, and then maybe we will include, and then we rec- we include Azerbaijani and Norbert just told me, no, I did so much work with this, just how funky. Let's include let's it put also. It in. Let's put it in also. <laughs> But I wasn't prepared at all, so I just prepared uh, this uh, for one day <laughs> or two days. Maybe. Uh, can you tell me about the piece a little bit? I mean, it, it sounds sort of like it starts off sort of atmospheric and then uh-huh. gets progressively more rhythmic and, well, funky, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a nice piece, and that's why I included it to my tour program also. Mm. This, uh, of course, because maybe it's because American piece. It's only one American piece what I play. Uh. In, what I played in my life <laughs> <laughs> so and I, I would like to play something American in the US um, but it's also a nice piece it's uh, kind of developing from beginning to the end and you feel like you are you are changing <laughs> from beginning to the end I like this kind of feeling you know when uh-huh. you started from one feeling and you're like growing 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 and then like, uh-huh so there's a build of a build of energy, a build yeah, of build tension. of energy, tension, something like. For me, this piece is kind of, I imagine something like thriller. Oh, <laughs> you know? really? Yeah, <laughs> when when you don't know at the beginning where you are, and then, and then just uh, action. <laughs> <laughs> cool.
111 Hey, it's funny because, for example, when you listen, when I listen to you, I, I, I had some imagination like how you look like. And yeah, when I met you, it's like totally another thing. <laughs>